This is a paella, and you don't have to be Spanish to make it, because you can get everything right in your supermarket. You can have rice, and sausages, and shrimp, and chicken, and tomatoes, and peppers, and garlic, and saffron, and paprika. We're doing a paella a l'américaine. Next time on The French Chef. This is a paella, and you don't have to be Spanish to make one, because you can get everything right in your supermarket. And I'm going to use rice, and sausages, and shrimp, and chicken, and chickpeas, and peppers, and tomatoes, and garlic, and saffron. And I'm going to call it a paella a l'américaine. And we're doing it today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. You know, paella is one of those dishes that you can get in the most terrible arguments over. It's really worse than politics, if that could be possible. It's uh, what it is, is a great big rice dish that originated in Spain, and besides rice, it has all kinds of things in it to make it an enormous main course. And about the only thing I can find out that people agree upon in a paella is that it has rice in it. It's just like uh, that bouillabaisse is a dish that has fish in it and cassoulet has beans in it. But as to what else goes in, like fish or chicken or meat, that's where the fur begins to fly. And the most famous paella of all comes from Valencia in Spain. <clears throat> and we've got a friend who's over there for several years, and she speaks wonderful Spanish. And she's been doing some paella research. And according to her, the only thing that a paella has besides rice and vegetables and seasoning is chicken and rabbit. And she says if you mix fish into it, oh, horror, it's not a paella at all. And then I found another fine recipe for a paella from Valencia, and it has chicken and rabbit and rice in it. And besides that, it has duck, pork, sausages, eel, codfish, lobster, shrimp, frogs, peppers, onions, artichokes, peas, beans, cauliflower, and 36 snails. Now, this is suggested to me that you can make a paella out of anything you want as long as you have some rice in it. And so I have made as though I were a tiny Spanish woman who's been let loose in a great big American supermarket. And so I'm going to make this paella out of anything that strikes my fancy. Too bad I didn't find any rabbit, but I've got rice and sausages and peppers and tomatoes and garlic and bacon and chicken and shrimp and some chickpeas, and some fresh peas, and some saffron. Now, you can, you can omit the sausages and pork products if you want. Actually, you can make a paella out of just, uh, just codfish if you want. But I'm, this paella that I'm making, I call paella a l'américaine. So there can be no arguments at all about it, and it does have rice in it. But rice is the key to the paella, because whatever other ingredients you put into it, you have to, they all cook with the rice, and so you have to time them so that they and the rice are all get done at the same time. And then that gives the rice the most delicious flavor, because it has picked up all the flavors of the other things that you go into it. And so just always keep in mind that it's a rice dish and the rice has to be delicious. Now as to the pork, I seem to have cut most of the pork up, but I like to get a, some pork that's fat and lean like a fresh pork butt. But you can use uh, fresh bacon or you can use ham or you can use, or can, you can use bacon. And then you saute it all. And I have it here sauteing so it's gonna render out its fat. 
And remember that you don't have to use any pork products at all. And then you come to the sausage business. And the Spanish sausage is called a chorizo. I know I speak Spanish, but I think that's the way it's pronounced. And a chorizo is made out of roughly ground pork and pork fat and pimento and seasonings. And I found in the supermarket this great big sausage that was called a churico. That sounds Spanish to me. And I looked on the label and it said it was, it was a pork sausage. Or you can use the Italian sausages, which you can get in most markets. That's a rough cut pork with pimento in it. And these ones, if you simmer for 10 minutes in water, and then you can cut them up and saute them. And they're awfully good. I just happen to love sausages, so I, that's why I always put them in. And this is going to be a paella for eight people, so I use a pound of sausage and about half a pound of pork. And that, I'm just browning all of this. And then we're going to have some chicken. And so I have another pan. Maybe little Spanish housewives cook this all in one pan. I don't know, but I find several pans are useful because there's so much, so many ingredients. And it would take you all day to brown them all separately. And so the pork fat goes into this big pan, and then I'm going to brown the chicken in that. And if you didn't have any pork fat, you'd use a nice fruity olive oil. And I have here six chicken thighs. Now that's much better if I were in Spain. I probably couldn't buy any chicken chop thighs. I'd just have to buy a whole chicken, and I'd only have two thighs rather than, no, I've got eight thighs here. I think that's the advantage of our wonderful supermarkets. And the chicken now all has to be nicely browned, and then it's going to be simmered so that it's going to be, oh, about three quarters cooked, or about 20 minutes of cooking before it begins cooking with the rice. And be sure that when you're browning chicken that you have your oil hot and that your chicken is dry, and you don't crowd the pan, otherwise you won't get it to brown. And this, will t this should take about oh, eight to 10 minutes to brown very nicely on all sides, and you just keep turning it around. And regulate your heat so that the oil isn't burning. And you want a nice large pan for the paella. And this is a Spanish paella pan made out of earthenware, and it has a rounded bottom. And that's because the little Spanish housewife has an outdoor barbecue called a paellero. And she sits the pan right in this great wood fire, and the fire is burning all around it, and you've got a little wood ash in, and that's supposed to give it a lovely, lovely flavor. And if you buy one of these, any kind of a terracotta pan or casserole, you have to cure it before you use it. Because if you don't cure it, it has a, t it smells terribly of clay. So what you do is you fill it with water up to about an eighth of an inch from the top, and then you put in about a cup full of good strong olive oil and a handful of garlic and some bay leaves and thyme and maybe some chopped onions. And then you put it in the oven and let it bake at about 300 degrees for four or five hours, and then let it cool off in the oven, and then just wash it out, and then your pan is ready to use and has a nice flavor. But this also is a wonderful pan for paella. It's made out of heavy aluminum. And it's about 14 inches, 14 inches across and about three inches high. And it's good and heavy, and it holds the heat. But you, you can use any kind of a big pan. I've seen some enormous ones about this size made out of heavy iron, which would be wonderful for cooking outdoors in. Or you could use a great big heavy roasting pan. Or what you could do would be to brown all of your meats in, in frying pans and then use a, some other kind of a big casserole that you could put on top of the stove to finish your cooking in. I've used my Spanish terracotta pan and browned the meat separately and then finished off 
the, with, on top of the stove, covering the pan with, I mean, putting a, an asbestos mat underneath it. And you could perfectly well use an electric skillet. It wouldn't look very Spanish, but I'm sure that a little Spanish housewife would love to have one if it was raining, raining on her paellero outdoors. Well, the main thing is you'll see later that you want something big enough so that you can get everything assembled at the end. And now you also want your Spanish vegetable flavoring. And there's a great big green pepper. I'm doing a paella for eight, so I'm gonna have one great big green pepper which will make about a cup. And that just gets cut up into slices. In some parts of Spain, they use uh, hot peppers. This is just the green, and that is just the green bell pepper, and that also cooks along with your, with your bacon. And if you weren't using the bacon and sausage, you should cook them in olive oil. And then we have to have some onions. And this would be no matter what your paella recipe was, you'd always have onions in. And this is going to make about a cup of sliced onions, and they too will cook along with the peppers. And they should probably cook about, oh, five or six minutes or so and lower the heat. And then while you're browning your chicken and cooking your flavoring vegetables, you can also take care of the vegetables that are going to be for the garnish. Now, for one thing, you always want some tomato. And this is, I've got about two or three whole tomatoes which have been peeled, seeded, juiced, and chopped. So those are all ready to go in. And then I have some fresh peas, because they're very pretty in this. And these are fresh peas that were dropped for five minutes in a large pot of boiling water and then drained and refreshed in cold water. So they're ready to go in. And then I have these chickpeas, or garbanzos, which come in a can, and they're delicious. And they seem very Spanish to me, so that's why I decided to have them. Now, when you have your chicken browned, it will take a little longer than I'm doing, and that your vegetables here are nice and soft, you just transfer all the vegetables in with the chicken. And then you, now you're going to simmer the chicken and vegetables together. And I don't know whether little Spanish housewives use wine in it, but I always like to use wine. You can use, say, a half a cup of either dry white wine or dry white French vermouth. And then you want four and a half cups of of either chicken stock or beef stock. And if you were a little Spanish woman, you would have made a lovely little stock out of your, out of the chicken neck and the feet and all of those things, even the eyeballs you'd probably use. It would be a lovely little stock. But if I, in the supermarket, I used half, half, um, half canned chicken broth and half beef bouillon. And I want that to come up just to the simmer. And then this is going to simmer very slowly, but we also want some herbs in it. And one thing you want to note with the liquid, remember we had four and a half cups of stock and half a cup of wine, which makes five cups. And note where it comes to on your casserole or on your dish. See, this comes just about to there. It's about an inch below the top, and you'll see why later, because this is, this is an important part, because you're going to cook the rice in this later. And then we're ready for the herbs and flavorings that are going to go in. And now I have what appears to me to be fairly Spanish. We have saffron, and then you always want paprika because the paella is supposed to be a nice red color. And then we have oregano and bay and thyme and coriander. 
And the saffron, I've got to see whether this is really on high. Yes, it is. The saffron is very typical because the pile is supposed to be sort of an orange color. And this is it. It comes in sort of a little leaf form, and it's very expensive. And I'm going to put in here, it's about half a teaspoon. I can always add a little bit more later. But you want to be very careful with saffron because it, if you put too much in, it can have a medicinal taste. And then paprika. And I'm going to put in a good teaspoon of good, fresh Hungarian paprika. Because it has to be red. And then some coriander. And my coriander just came in berries, so I'm going to, I have a little, a little mortar that I bought in a French drugstore. So I've got about six six coriander there. That gives a lovely flavor. And then some thyme. And I'll put in about half a teaspoon of that. I can always add a little more of herbs later on if I feel it's necessary. And about half a teaspoon of oregano. Some people call it oregano. I don't know why. Maybe that is correct. And a bay leaf. And then stir this all around. You can see already that the paprika and the saffron is coloring this liquid, so it's taking on what I presume to be quite a Spanish look. <clears throat> then we have to have garlic. You never could have any Mediterranean dish with garlic. And I'm going to use three great big garlic cloves. And if you're a little Spanish woman, you probably you wouldn't be using a garlic press, you just take a big knife and go wham, and then chop it up. I also think a chop rather than a pureed garlic seems a little more foreign, so I like to use that in a dish like this. And then you want to be sure and taste it. You may want more salt and pepper, and I have a nice two-handled, two-double-ended spoon here. Well, that tastes very Spanish to me. You may find you taste it again after the chicken has, has cooked in it. And then you can add more salt and pepper if you need it. And now, you want this chicken to simmer very slowly for 20 minutes, covered. And you, so, so you just watch it and let it cook for 20 minutes. In other words, this is a frying chicken, which takes about, say, 25 to 30 minutes in all to cook. And you want to have it almost cooked because it's going to finish in the rice. And so this is to simmer very slowly for 20 minutes and then you uncover it and degrease it and then you're ready to put the rice in. And then as to other things that you may want to add, I'm going to put in about a pound of, of shrimp. These are just plain boiled shrimp, but I want a little more flavor in. So I'm going to put in some salt and some pepper I think this adds a great deal to plain boiled shrimp, just to flavor it first and let it sort of marinate. And then some lemon juice. And I'll squeeze it through my always impeccably clean towel. Just about half a thing of lemon juice and a little bit of oil. And I think I'll put in some oregano, too. This makes a tremendous amount of difference in shrimp, I think. Then I'm going to put in just a little bit of olive oil and stir it all up. If you want to do this ahead, you could put it in the refrigerator. But it's just going to taste a lot better, having some flavor like that. And then I just happened to find in my supermarket some fresh mussels, these lovely black things. And these are awfully nice in a paella because they give a, a, some lovely dark accents. And when you buy them, you want to scrape all the, the sort of growth and other things on the outside of them. And you pull off a little beard. And then you soak them in cold water. And do like this and lift them out and change the water and let them soak for about two hours. And that gets all the sand out of them if there is any sand. Or you could use clams, which would be which are typical also, or lobster. And now, we'll say that this chicken, that chicken business has cooked for 20 minutes. 
and you've degreased it and it tastes absolutely perfectly. And then you add two cups of rice and you just pour it right in. This is not like the French or the risotto. The rice is not sauteed first, it's just poured right in. And then be sure that you stir it around and make sure that all the rice is, is not, none of the rice is sticking on the chicken. And then, this is your very serious part, this rice. And nobody agrees <coughs> on the ingredients, but everybody agrees that in a well-cooked paella that the rice must be absolutely perfect, that the grains are separate and very slightly al dente. And if it's sort of a mushy mass, it's absolutely ghastly. I've had some of those sort of mushy paellas and they're just awful. And with this we have our two cups of rice for eight people and one cup of rice makes three cups of cooked rice, so two cups makes, makes six, and that's just about right. And as you remember, you have to notice where the liquid was. After you've boiled it, simmered it for 20 minutes, the liquid will have reduced a little bit. So you have about four and a half cups of liquid. Just remember where that mark on the pan was. Because when you're cooking rice, you have twice as much liquid as you have rice. And because this is a large pan, you have slightly more. And then you want this to cook uncovered for five to seven minutes until the rice has swelled just a little bit and, and you feel that it's really getting a good cooking. And this is the typical of the paella, is that if possible, you want to have the whole dish cook uncovered and never cover it, never cover it at all. But this depends on the type of rice you have. And in Spain, they have a a rice that cooks uncovered in 12 to 13 minutes. And it's a sort of a gray type of rice. And it's, it doesn't look like our long grain Carolina. The long grain Carolina rice I have found is just no good at all in a paella because it takes about 18 minutes to cook and you really have to cover it. And every time I've used it, I've had sort of a mushy type of rice and I've thought it was terrible. But an awfully good substitute if you live near an Italian neighborhood is this Italian rice which comes in a little sack and it is a beautiful rice, it is a white, thick white grain and this cooks perfectly uncovered in 12 to 13 minutes and if you can possibly get this rice I think it's even better than the real Spanish rice but and you can't get it in the ordinary supermarket and the absolutely best substitute I have found is, which you can get in every supermarket, is this converted rice. It says on it that it's long grain, parboiled, converted rice. And if you look in your supermarket, you can get it anywhere. This is not instant rice, because instant rice, you just pour boiling water on it. This rice, you have to cook, and this may strike oh horror into your breast that you could make a Spanish paella with converted rice but I'm on very safe ground because a perfectly lovely little tiny Spanish woman who's the wife of a famous architect who and she's Spanish and every time she goes over to Spain she takes 50 pounds of converted rice with her and all of her Spanish friends say it makes the best paella that they've ever had so the main thing is, because the rice is so important, I find that if you can't get the Italian, use the converted because it really works. And now, after about five to seven minutes, and this is boiled up nicely, then you add the rest of your ingredients. You add your mussels or clams. And I'm just gonna put these mussels right in here and just stick them down and they'll open up by themselves. You can put in as many as you like, as long as it makes an attractive arrangement. And then I'm going to put in the chickpeas. I love the flavor of chickpeas. Some recipes also use uh, dried white beans. You could use the dried Italian ones. And then the peas, which have just been boiled about five minutes, and this will finish off their cooking. And then we have the shrimp that go in. 
And if you were going to add lobster in here, you would have chopped up the lobster raw and sautéed it until it was bright red and then put the lobster in. And now one very important thing here is that you never stir. Once the rice has gone in, you never stir it at all because that really ruins the rice. It, that's one thing that will make the rice gummy. So just, just remember that. Don't stir at all. And if necessary, check the seasoning and taste it. And then after all of this has gone in, the tomatoes go on top. At least I like to put them on top because it, I think it, it gives a pretty color. If you had some canned red pimento, you could put that on also. And in this, if you, I don't think it's necessary to baste it, but you can a little bit. But the important thing is that you do not stir the rice at all. And then you let it cook until the rice is just tender. And you may find that uh, all the liquid is evaporated, but the rice isn't quite tender. And in that case, cover it and lower the heat for two or three minutes, and then finish it off uncovered rather slowly. But when it's all done, the liquid should be thoroughly absorbed. And this is the way it looks. You see, there's no liquid there at all. And everything is properly done, and the rice is perfect. And so then you want to decorate it with some lemon pieces, which I think is very nice. Evidently, in Valencia, they always serve it with lemon and squeeze the lemon over. Then you can put on some parsley if you feel it, feel it needs it. I don't think with the peas that you really do need any parsley. And then the lemon goes around. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And there you are, all ready to serve. No, I don't. I think you can do this ahead to some extent. You can certainly do the chicken ahead, but your main concern is the rice. And I think until you have worked out, out your own method for doing it, you're better to, once the rice goes in, to plan to serve it right away. And then don't let it wait, and you won't have anything gummy. So here we are. And with, I'm going to serve the paella so you're going to see how it looks on the plate. There's that rice, and it has all come out perfectly with the grains separate. Everyone should get some chicken and some mussels and some shrimp and a little bit of everything. And the peas and a nice piece of lemon. And then with this, you can serve a Spanish type of salad with tomatoes and olives and anchovies. And you can serve either a nice dry white wine like a Pinot Blanc or a Rosé, or a red wine like a Beaujolais or a Mountain Red. So don't be scared by the name paella. Remember, it's just a rice casserole. And don't be put off by anyone who says what you have to put in it. Because I'm sure that any little tiny Spanish housewife let loose in a great big American supermarket would come up with something like our paella a l'américaine. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. <laughs>